Coming into the weekend, he has played in only seven. Holman flips it on. Connor Fields in the former chaos puts it through. Blaze Reardon. They're just so slick. And once you get that initial slide, you've got to be really sound behind the play. So you got a short stick on Ahmed. So you're going to go and help that. Okay, we're going to rotate. We've covered up on Holman. But then we don't have that last slide to get to Fields, who's left wide open on the doorstep. You can see Resch try to help out his keeper by hopping in front. But too much time and right in front of the field. And you know that's got to feel good for Connor Fields making his homecoming here. Tom Schreiber rolls on Newman. Schreiber straight away stopped there by Blaze Reardon, picked up and put back by Ryan Ambler. Reardon made the initial stop of the rebound, comes to Ambler. 12th of the season for Ryan Ambler. Just always making plays, and they always seem to be of kind of the hustle, extra effort, extra effort variety. There you can see on the rebound, Holman tries to take a stab at it right there, doesn't come up with it. And on the loose ball, Ambler grabs it and buries it before the defense can recover. Ryan Ambler now with 12 goals on the season. He had three of them. His last time out against Redwoods in Colorado Springs, uh, he had the hardest shot in the shot hardest shot competition in 2021 as well. It just didn't come at the right time, and Jake Ficaro took home the crown. Dane Smith able to fight his way across midfield. Ill-advised pass there by rookie, the rookie trainer in transition. You're taught as a younger player, throw that ball forward. Let, let the attackman throw back to any sort of trailer. It's such a high degree of difficulty throwing across your body, running full speed. Behind the back from Byrne came to Smith. He shot it wide. And there is obviously a great connection and some chemistry between Byrne and Dane Smith. And a great respect for each other as well. Fraser just stuffs it in. Good goal. Good goal, yeah. Yeah, there you go. There's the signal. It took a while to get that signal. Gilman claiming there was a crease violation. They call it a good goal on the field. First of the day for Chaos. Comes just after the halfway point of the first quarter, and it comes from Chase Fraser, his fifth of the season, and it's 2-1. to one. 13 and a half scores per game for this Archer's offense. Holman on the doorstep for Schreiber on the money. Perfect pass from Marcus Holman and a tap in for Tom Schreiber. Two assists already for Marcus Holman tonight. You're going to see Holman, who's matched up on a short stick, the switch Rowlett goes for the home run check. And as Holman carries up field, Pat Resch goes to support across the crease. If you're going to do that, you've got to have that second slide prepared. And you can see Costabile just a step late down the backside to Schreiber. Tom Schreiber, that's his point of the season. Let's go under the helmet with Matt McMahon of the Archer's defense. Hey, where are we? Where are we? Trainer, stay inside. Trainer, stay inside. Go with the cutter. Check, 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 check. By yourself, Warren. Should have been a reset. Hey, pick coming, pick coming left, Neek. Pick coming right, Neek. Stay, Neek. Hey, 
Sun Chlorella, Chlorella powering the athletes under the helmet tonight. And a good defensive stand by Archers turns into a goal on the other end. It is 4-1 Archers. And let's start with the defense. And McMahon's communication, you know, Coach Bates really credited him for transitioning to a communicator role. You think back to his first two years, more of an on-ball guy. They get Hasek, they get Jeffrey. He's now the, the, the field general. After the stop, Ratliff pushes in transition. And right there, you can see Newman kind of like, okay, do I have to support here? Ratliff's a threat. And that's just enough space for Holman to get his hands free. So it started on the defensive end, and they cash in at the other end. Has only been held without a goal one time. And it was the Archers who did it. Their first matchup back week two. There is a goal, as Gittleman couldn't stop that shot. Good action here by Chaos offensively. Ends up with the ball and Smith stick behind the cage on a short stick. They disguise that invert a little bit. And as he pushes up, he draws the double team easy feed to Frazier, who has a clean step down look. He has the only two goals tonight for Chaos as well. Got one halfway through the first quarter, has one here a couple minutes into the second. And Max Adler jumps again. 12 on the shot clock. Slipping through and scoring again is Chase Frazier. He has all three tonight for Chaos. Same action as before. I misspoke. It's Wes Berg, not Ryan Smith. We're going to swing it to Wes Berg. He's going to drive hard upfield. A quick help. Frazier took the step down. This time, the pump, the face dodge, and the release. Low to high. His ability to just yank that up top in such quick manner. He is a lethal shooter. Two goals in a minute and 11 seconds for Frazier. Was from behind, but The subsequent turnover, I, th I think the ball ended up being in the right spot. <laughs> Funny how that works out. Chase Fraser having himself a night, but no doubt would like to get somebody else involved in the scoring. How about Tanner Cook? Had a goal against Chrome in his PLL and season debut. 23 year old out of North Carolina. And there is a shot that goes to tie it. This time, it is Ryan Smith. And Chaos, after falling down 4-1, have scored the last three. And it is even at four. Five minutes to go before halftime. Ryan Smith, his sixth. Fighting through the stick work. Holman dropped it, picks it back up again. Lost it once more, regains. Across for Amen in front, fields and scores! Not what they drew up, but certainly some quick ball movement around the field. Archers take back the lead here in the final minute of the half. That's two for Connor Fields here on home turf. Holman, after potentially losing the ball early, picks it back up, and in that scramble, Fields is left open right on the crease. Good identification by Amen. And after Fields catches it, pivoting his body to get his stick back to the inside to get it past Reardon. Paul Burmeister has counter Fields, Paul. 
As for extra motivation tonight, you're thinking about more about playing against your former team or on the field where you played in college? I don't know. You know, I think it's just it's really cool being back out here. I mean, so many great memories, and I think Albany's got the best fans in all of lacrosse. So you know, it's really cool to be out here in front of them again, and you know, just just having fun. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Lake City. Archers hoping not to be there. Still have a chance at the number one overall seed, which would mean a bye straight through to the semifinal. Second half starts with a goal for Josh Byrne. Shut out in the first half, but their leading score strikes 34 seconds in to quarter number three. Hey, Josh, as we're watching the replay, just talk us through the chemistry that you and Mac O'Keefe are developing with that two-man game. You know what, Kiefer has been awesome at being able to let it eat. And now he's learning how to pass, man. That's dangerous. That's real dangerous. Well, you have to like what Chaos has built. And, and this is a team we've talked about. They've gotten better as the season has gone along. And some of their players, like Mac O'Keefe, have gotten better as the season has gone along. Son Clarella powering the athletes under the helmet here tonight. And that goal ties it at five. So Josh Byrne gets an early touch and an early goal, and you wonder if Archers would like to do the same thing with Will Manny, who was shut out in that first half. I would expect to go right back to that as they do. Okay, throws the brakes on. Inside for Fraser, looking for his fourth. Got run into by McMahon, lands in the crease. Between these two teams. The overhead shot, that one goes. Archers back ahead on the play from Trey LeClaire over the head, beating Blaze Reardon. Tom Schreiber straight away. Drew the double team. Found an open man. LeClaire keeps it moving. They come down, and it's a goal for Marcus Holman. He has been leading the way tonight for Archers. Two goals, two assists so far for Marcus Holman. And it starts off this two-man game action. So you got to respect Schreiber, so you're going to get this double team right here. And then it's just a matter of just pa pinpoint passing kind of around the perimeter, ending up with Holman, who's going to kind of curl around to finish to increase his angle. But we start with Schreiber coming off of it. He gets his hands free, and they swing it around the perimeter. Credit to Holman to step up fields, give a little bit more shooting angle. You need every inch you can get against Reardon. But that right there, that signature archers the cross. You start with a two-man game, you generate the double team, and then the pinpoint passing takes it from there. Second goal tonight for Holman. Go, go, what a play on the dive from Byrne, and it goes. Josh Byrne just takes it out in front and buries it on the backhand. Two goals for Byrne here in this third quarter. Incredible individual effort by Byrne. Hey, Josh, when you go to that backhand shot, how do you get that in terms of going far side versus near side? How do you do that technically? Man, you're just trying to extend your hands out as far as possible. Just trying to get up in the air a little bit, too. A little bit of hang time never hurt nobody. <laughs> he is such a tough cover, and part of it is just the athleticism. Ian McKay finds a trailing Surtick. Surtick picked up by Holman, who's trapped on D. Now he's able to get back as Surtick allows him to. And I've never seen Glassini react after getting hit by a shot, and I could hear him yelling all the way up from the booth. It's a tie game again, Josh Byrne. All three for Byrne have come here in the third quarter. He's rolling. Five points in his last three games. Just a big sweep from up top. You can see Hasek go underneath of that pick. So they've got LeClaire trapped on defense. McKay 
keeps him on, gets him involved in the two-man game. You don't want to switch that. And when Hasek goes underneath, Burn is able to bear down on the goal and get his hands free. And put enough velocity, and since he's in the middle of the field, a lot of net. Adler had the clamp, but then knocked down. Ratliff came in with a chance at the ground ball. This one goosed away from traffic by Troy Ray. And he picked and crowned your champion. What will be the difference in this one? Max Adler wins the opening faceoff to start the fourth quarter, and he buries it. First PLL goal for Max Adler. It gives Chaos the lead to start the fourth. He had two assists in Colorado. He's gonna win it forward. You don't wanna slide off a of burn, justifiably so, and Adler makes the archers pay. I mean, look, if they're gonna get this level of production from Adler, yes, you can put them in that contender bucket. He went three of six in the third quarter. Ryan Smith. Jack! Wanted Dane Smith, pass off the mark. Hasek came up with it, escapes Burn. Graham Hasek with a lane right down the middle. Gives the pass on, gets it back. Hasek kicked away by Reardon. Now it's Jared Newman going for a run. Newman, open, makes the pass instead, and Cloutier scores. What a swing. Blaze Reardon stop on one end. Turns into a goal on the other. Two goal swing indeed. Let's start with a save by Reardon. A little give and go between Hasek and Holman. Reardon quick reaction, just throwing out his leg and in transition, I thought Newman might wind up for a two. Decides to, to push it wisely. Draws the attention there of Jeffrey and Cloutier, the little pump fake and extra step in front of the cage. Holman scores! Great ball movement ends up in the stick of Marcus Holman. He's got a five point night, that's his third goal. And it ends a 4-0 run for Chaos. And when the archers are rolling offensively, it's about touches, quick ball movement, the extra pass, Schreiber to Fields winds up, touch pass inside. So credit Fields for taking a little something off of that feed, as opposed to gunning it in there to Holman. Throws a very catchable pass, that way Holman can identify it. And Barry. Holman has the last two goals for Archers. They came 10 and a half minutes apart. Two assists in the game for the PLL assist leader, Amen. Holman, he scores again! Marcus Holman has scored the last three for Archers and he has gotten them back to even. 36 seconds apart on the last two. Good little action between him and Amen. Amen carries to the left, so draws the defense's attention, and on that throwback, there's just a lot of space for Holman to re-attack. Head up, act like you're feeding, identify the open area, and then beautiful placement, ring in the pipe. It doesn't get any better than that in terms of accuracy. They've got Newman here. McKay thinking about it himself, and he got it! A two-pointer for Ian McKay to break the tie. They've got Newman. What am I talking about? They've got McKay. He's got more two-pointers on the season than Newman. But you can see McKay, a full windup. And it actually skips off of Gittleman's stick. Both of McKay's two-pointers came in an earlier game against the Archers, who traded him away in the offseason for Connor Fields. And he's with Paul Burmeister. A lot of volume down here, guys. <laughs> Ian, at, at what point there did you just... 
That's all right. Oh, look at him. At, and at what point did you know you're going to wind up and let that one go? Uh, probably not till the last second, you know. Trust our offense a lot. We want to get them the ball. And they didn't slide to me, didn't respect me, and just uh, stuck my opportunity. Speaking of not respecting you, is, is a thought in the back of your mind this is the team that let you go? Yeah, you know, first and foremost, we want to win. Um, but I'd be lying if I said it's not a little bit in the back of my head. You know, and they got the better of us earlier in the year. So um, obviously we're in a playoff spot right now, but now it's trying to get good seating, and that's the main priority right now. Thanks, Ian. Yep, no problem. I think grit, you know, I think that uh, our team really responded. I think we were a little frustrated with the, uh, the start of our season. We were a little frustrated, particularly against that team. And that's an unbelievably talented team, unbelievably coached team. Adam Gittleman played an incredible game for them. Uh, you know, and the games kind of mimicked each other from the first time. We were up 6-1 uh, to start that first quarter, I think, last time we played them in, in game two, I think it was, or game three, whatever it was. And then they beat us the last three quarters, and this was kind of a, a flip-flop of that. They were up 4-1 in this quarter. Uh, after the first quarter in this game, we came back, and, and we dug down. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an incredibly good team that we played. But I'm just so proud of the fact that our guys are sticking together. It's not an easy thing to do in sports when you're not getting the desired result, but it shows uh, the mental fortitude. It shows how unified our group is, and we're starting to become a, a dangerous team. When you pulled the trigger a few months ago on the Connor Fields for Ian McKay trade, Plenty said he didn't get enough in return for a player like Connor Fields. After Ian McKay hits the game winning two there, your thoughts? Uh, you know what, I'm just so happy for Ian McKay. You know, Connor Fields is one of the best players in the world, but he had an unbelievable two years for us. And it was, it was tough to let somebody go that's that great of a player and that quality of a person, you know. But we also knew that we were getting an unbelievably talented player and an unbelievably high quality person. You know, we played for Ryan Curtis, our defensive coach at Vermont, and we've known what Ian McKay can do. And so, uh, you know, we're just really happy with our roster. Uh, you know, Connor Fields played a great game tonight as well, uh, but but it was only fitting, you know, that, that Ian McKay stepped up and uh, and hit the game-winning two uh, down the stretch. I couldn't be happier for him. Gritty win. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Chaos take this one 11-9. Our full weekend of PLL action continues later on as Atlas take on Water Dogs. 4.15 Eastern on Peacock on Saturday, followed by Cannons and Chrome at 7 Eastern on NBCSN. For Ryan Boyle, Paul Burmeister, and our entire NBC Sports crew, I'm Brendan Burke saying we'll see you a little later on.